Welcome to the world of the turtle, an adventure of both mind and body, for this is the land of love and relationship personified. Great romantic relationships, it turns out, demand a certain amount of mental dexterity and informal smartness to help guide you home and keep you safe. It is this knowledge that is taught at the University of Life. The turtle has a map, and he's willing to show you the way there. So come now. Your journey, like mine, is about to begin. Turtle Logic and the University of Life. Chapter 1. The Dream. By the time I finally got up the courage to open my eyes, it was already too late. I was gone, flying high above the lands on the wings of a great feathered beast. The sun sat low in the horizon. I could feel its tender rays upon my face as I rose up and down in the air. To my side, a group of rugged, snow-capped mountains stood in silence as we descended into the distant valley ahead. How delicious were the deep colors of blue and green we flew upon. I could hear the wind. I could taste the salt in the air as I guided so gracefully, clenching my fist to the leather harness that held me to this beast so tight. This was the land of the teacher, I was told. It was where I was sent to learn the ways of the turtle, the wise creature that stood upright and walked on two legs. That was all that I knew as I held on to the back of this giant feathered beast. It was certainly a paradox of sorts, with me so high in the sky, free and clear in this flight with this bird, while far below stood the darkness of this hidden land that I was soon to become a part of. As far as I, my eyes could see, there was nothing but this mysterious landscape, with its tall, shadowed peaks towering so high. Where was I? Was this a dream? Only time could tell. For now, though, I took my task of holding on to the leather harness of my saddle very seriously, for this was a frightfully dangerous spot I was in, so I grabbed tight and looked down only in short glimpses as we glided towards, glided forward, riding upon the strong and forceful wind that pushed from behind. For hours I flew through the crisp air, en route to points unknown. I knew I was going somewhere, I knew it was important, but other than that it was all quite a mystery. What was I doing gliding through the air on the back of this incredible bird? I didn't know the answer to this question, so I just hung on tight to his wide feathered shoulders, and I prayed that I was heading in the right direction. Then the inevitable des descent came, and downward the great bird plunged. Deep tears welled up in my eyes as we dropped towards the earth below. I held on tight as the great bird dragged me down. A bone-numbing chill pierced my body as we descended through the clouds to the colder air below. Then, just before we hit the ground, he stabilized on this and a flight on a fast horizontal run, grazing the tree chops by just a few inches as he flew. We then rose into a strong vertical climb, rising up and around the tall jagged cliffs and high up into the sky above. What was he doing? Where was he taking me? I couldn't see his eyes, just the nap of his feathered neck as he jerked it back and forth. And then wham, again he descended, this time even further into the recesses of the canyon as we turned violently upwards through the cliff face again. We rose at this point to an almost perfect vertical, floating on the wind as we slowed towards the summit of our descent. Then, as if s suspended in the air, the great bird slowly turned, tilting his wide head to one side as if in preparation for one final descent. A blank moment passed. I could hear the calm air flow through my hair. I could feel the moisture in those high clouds pass through my breath. Then, in a marked moment of change, the bird released the wind's mighty lift from beneath its wings and headed straight down. It felt like my stomach went into my throat as I fell in what seemed like a deathly freefall into the forgiven rocks below. <clears throat> then, in an acrobatic arch of his back and a quick twist of his spine, the bird righted himself at the last possible seconds before impact. And bam, he hit the ground just in the right position as not to cause any harm to me, his precious cargo. I hung on tight, clinging to the harness as my only security. The air was still as the dust settled and I raised my head, and there I was, tight gripped to the leather straps, my face buried in the shallow warmth of his frosty feathers, my only comfort from the cold. The great bird turned to me. For the first time, I could see his face. It was a bald eagle. I could tell by the white feathers on his face and head. Huge in size he was, staring down at me as if to say, Your trip is now over, my friend. His dark black eyes never blinked. He just stared down at me silently in the cold, brisk breeze that filled the air. In my mind, I knew that the trip was over, so I let loose of my feeble grip on the wide straps that secured me to his back. As I did, the great bird fluttered its wings, and I slid away, down towards the ground where I hit with a thump. The bird rose up, turned its head, and looked at me. 
One last glance at its cargo, delivered as promised to this destination of sorts. His large clawed feet slowly brushed at the dirt as he moved a foot or two away. He then stretched out his great wings and with one solemn blink from those deep black eyes said his goodbye. One flap was all that it took and he was gone, disappearing behind the rocky cliffs that shrouded my view from above. So I was left there, standing alone in the high mountain gorge with, this, with, the, with the light of the day quickly settling out of view. All I could see were these massive boulders piled high above my head into the descending darkness. I stood there for a few anxious moments in silent thought, thinking to myself, where the hell was I and just what exactly was I to do now? Then a crash came. It was a series of rocks that fell unexpectedly under the path where I was standing. The debris grazed my shoulder, almost knocking me to the ground as they rolled away to a violent stop. A chill came over my body as I looked up at the dark hollow of the canny walls above. The frigid mist that floated in the air pierced my light denim jacket as I struggled to see just exactly what was happening. Tall, dark, leafless trees stood solemn at my sides with only the steep barren trail that fell out before me. I was not alone here, it seemed, and as tired and weary as I was, I knew that I had to get up my courage and start moving fast. <clears throat> I could hear howls out in the distance, voices of some kind, muffled words echoing through the canyon as I stood by listening. They didn't sound like any animal noises I'd heard before. No, these were human voices, deep penetrating human voices bouncing through the steep canyon walls. I stood by silently, looking up and down the canyon for some direction, some indication of a way back to my old world, but there was none. Just those empty howls out in the distance and the sparse barren trail that lay before me up ahead. So I began to walk, one foot in front of the other, over the black leaves that lay wet and flat on the damp cold ground. Those canyon walls, a tall and penetrable bar barrier that rose up around me, seemed to be hiding the truth as to where I really was. <clears throat> the trail was steep, but I managed to navigate it successfully by jumping from rock to rock as I made my way down the rugged embankment. I could still hear the howls, human-like wails out beyond the cliffs, and they were getting closer. They were growing stronger with every anxious step I would take. I kept moving ever so faster, hoping to avoid whatever it was that was out there lurking. Over all the broken twigs and jagged large rocks that stood in my path, I soon began to make out actual words, quick phrases that would escape the distant rumble <coughs> and echo through the air on their own. <coughs> you, I heard. Then the word I came bluttering through the air. Then the word fact rumbled in. Then the words, this is how it is. I know more than you. Shut up. All these words started to fill the air. One after another, these word fragments came flowing from behind the outer walls of the canyon. And one by one, they would roar into my ears. And each time they would land, my heart would skip another beat. Then came the thumps, <clears throat> these pounding hard thumps that vibrated across the ground. I was terrified alone in the canyon, waiting for some kind of beast to catch up and devour me. So I ran. I ran as fast as I could, down the steep incline, jumping from one boulder to another as I descended, trying to escape the strange voices and the horrid pounding that followed me. It was terrifying indeed, stranded in this world, a world that I... I knew I had to somehow get myself out of fast. By this point, I could hear those words echoing loudly through my ears. I could feel the thumbs pounding the ground ever so close. I saw refuge up ahead in the green forest that began to open in the hollows below. There were some trees, some green bushes that I could see off in the distance. I had to get to that thicket and hide. It was my only chance. I had to find a place in those trees up ahead and, and try to hide from whatever it was that was coming after me. So I got to the forest floor and I kept running. The distorted voices grew louder and louder and the thumbs seemed to be right behind me. They seemed so close that I could almost feel hot breath on the back of my neck. I was going to be caught, I just knew it. I was going to be devoured by some ugly beast. I, I, was, I, I was about to be tackled and crushed by these powerful unknown brutes that stalked me so ruthlessly. And then I saw him, walking out along the trail before me. There he stood, tall and proud, with a slight grin placed crooked, under one side of his strange, leathery face. He had a wide, dark green shell attached to his back and big, round, stubby claws contracted into his sides. It was the turtle, the one I was told about. He stood upright, as I did, and just looked at me as I ran feverishly towards him through the forest. He just watched in silence as I approached at a full gallop, slowly putting up a hand that calmly gestured me to slow down and stop. Dusty, exhausted, not a breath, I laid my arms down by my sides. I didn't know what to expect at that point, but I was just too tired to keep running. The turtle looked at me with his 
big round reptilian eyes, looking straight at me. I took my eyes to the ground, hoping the, the great turtle was there to save me. So I, I dropped down and waiting for him to say something, anything that might clear up what was happening to me. But he remained silent, standing in the shadows of the trees, looking deep into my soul with a piercing stare. So I spoke first. Who are you? I asked as I slumped to catch my breath. So you would like to know who I am, he replied. Yes, who are you, please? Well, my name is Alfred. I am Alfred the Turtle. He then reached out and pulled up a large rock with one hand. Please have a seat, he said. I sat down and he proceeded to pull up another large rock for himself as he took his place beside me. This is my forest, he said, and it seems you find yourself upon this path within it. I think it would be only right if you were to tell me who you are. Then he quickly fo followed with a short, so what's up? The voices had stopped. The deep vibrating thumbs that trailed behind me had vanished. I could hear the beast off in the distance romping, romping away. The noise they made receding ever so slowly. The forest, once so frightening, suddenly became a quiet and peaceful place. Those creatures, I said to the turtle, they're after me. It was tough to get the words out. I was so out of breath at that moment. They are gone now, said the turtle. Do not worry. They will not approach you while I am by your side. I looked at the turtle. He had a calm, reassuring nature that made me feel safe. I sat there for a moment, just gazing at him and thinking out loud to myself. You see, I had been having a rather hard time of it lately. A lot of questions had been flowing through my mind. The strange beasts that trailed me were only part of my dilemma. They were but a symptom of the darkness I had somehow shrouded my real world in. I was confused sitting there on the rock with the turtle. I was tired and confused about my life and about my relationships I found in it. And I was tired of fighting. The monsters, they seemed to have gone away for now, but would they return? How was I to find my way out of this place? The approaching darkness of that chilly evening felt familiar to me. It felt just like my, the loneliness I lived so often in my own world. The howls receding in the distance felt like my fears. The fog, my confusion. I was lost, not only in this strange world, but in my own world as well. And I wanted to find my way home. I just wanted to find peace in my life. I wanted to find my way out of the forest. I explained all this to the turtle who sat there patiently listening on the rock next to me. So you would, like, you would like to find your way out of this forest. Did I get that right? The turtle said. Yes, I said. It, it's cold. It's so cold and I don't understand how I got here. And does this world remind you of anything, perhaps? I looked at the turtle. What was it that he was getting at? I sat there silently for a moment in thought. I sat there gazing at my new surroundings as a little tear welled up in my eye. Yes, I said, it does remind me of something. This all reminds me of my own life, the people in my life, my relationships, my emotions. This place reminds me of all of that. And I'm scared. How do I get out of it? How do I get out of this frightening life I now find myself in? So you would like to find your way out of the frightening life you find yourself in. Did, did I get that right? The turtle said. Yes. The turtle leaves back on his rock. He paused for a brief moment, gazing at the forest trees that now started to appear through the lifting fog. Is there anything else you'd like to add to that? No. Well, if you like, you can come with me, he said. But it's a long trip. Make table, take a while. But if you like, I can show you what I know, which may lead you out of this forest and into the life you seek. I sat there and I pondered this question. I had no direction, no map, no prospects for a clear way home. I was lost, surrounded by the eerie gloom. So misplaced was I in this barren and unusual world. So misplaced was I in my real world as well. I knew this. I knew I needed some help if I was ever to get out of either one. So what do you want to do? Oh, so what do I have to do? Well, the turtle said, as he eased back on his rock and reached his stubby arms out of his shell to rub his chin just a little. Well, what we need to do is get you to the University of Life. And this path you're on will take you there. When you pass through the University of Life, you will have the tools and skills that will show you the way out of this world. I can take you there, if you like. The University of Life, I said? What's that? The University of Life is where I work. It is where I hone my knowledge and where I can do the most good for you on your quest to move beyond this dark place you find yourself in. You see, I come across many people out here on the path, individuals and couples alike, and you all have one thing in common. You're all looking for more understanding about your lives and about the relationships you find in them. That is why you're here, is it not? A warm feel feeling enveloped my body. I knew in my heart that he was right. I knew in my heart that I had to go. This was a way for me to get back home, back to a better life that I knew existed for me somewhere. The University of Life is a place where you will learn a set of skills, the turtle said. 
These skills, when practiced, can do wonderful things in your life. These are the skills you will need to get, if you are to get yourself out of this forest and out of all the dark forests of your life on the other side of this world. I looked at the turtle sitting there on the rock next to me. It was a strange scene with the two of us out there in that forest with the dark, misty trees swaying in the background. The great light of the day was dimming lower and lower as I sat in silent thought. I looked at him, his leathery face shining like a beacon of light through a foggy, unsettled ocean. I knew what I had to do. Yes, I said after a moment of reflection. Yes, Alfred, take him to the University of Life. Okay, then, Alfred smiled. We'll start out in the morning. The dark haze had lifted away just enough for me to now make out the distant silhouettes of tall mountains that surrounded us. Specks of blue and yellow filtered silently through the thick, dark clouds that hung in the sky overhead. Above, I could feel that there was a bright, vibrant sun waiting for the right moment when it could shine through. The ground, rugged with boulders, fell out before us, jagged and sharp, as we stood up from those flat rocks and started on our journey. This way, said the turtle. We will walk for a while to get to a more suitable place to spend the night. The path ahead is rocky, but it will take us exactly where we want to go. Right this way. The steep rocky cliffs and deep mountain gullies finally did disappear. Soon we were walking upon a lightly forested mossy path with tall green pine trees and tiny yellow flowers. Birds and other small animals started to appear before us as we moved on through the improving landscape. We will stop here for the night, the turtle said as we approached an open area of trees. The camp was already set up and ready for us with a full complement of camping gear laid out among the mossy rocks and twigs. Oh yes, I love camping, the turtle said under his breath. I proceeded to help my new reptilian friend by collecting the miscellaneous items that were scattered about. This consisted of the different types of camping gear, eating utensils, and water jugs. I was just minding my business, just setting the gear up on a nearby wooden picnic table, when all of a sudden the most frightening creature sprang out of the bush. What are you doing? the creature yelled at me. Then it walked away and hid behind a nearby tree. I stood there, stunned a bit, and searching for the turtle who had at that moment, found something otherwise to do. The creature looked like a furry animal of some kind, scraggly and gray like an old dog. I looked around and I looked around and over at the tree where the creature had disappeared to. Then I noticed a bit of smoke floating up from behind the scattered branches. As I approached, the scraggly creature revealed itself to me once again, peering out from behind the left side of the brown and black tree trunk. What are you doing here? it said. I'm with the turtle. Oh, you are with the turtle, and that gives you the right to be messing with all of his gear? Well, he, he brought me here, I said. We are on our way to the University of Life. The University of Life? So what are you hoping to find there? Tools, I guess. Tools to help me cope and build good relationships in my life. Is that what the turtle told you? Well, yes, it is. That moment, the turtle returned. He walked out from behind an outcropping of large boulders and took his place among us. So I, uh, I guess you met Bill, he said. This is Bill, I questioned. Yes, meet Bill, Bill Kaywood. Nice to meet you, Bill, I said respectively. Bill just looked at me, slowly showing a sinister smile as he took another slow draw off his dwindling cigarette. Oh, another one, he mumbled under his breath. He then turned and made his way over to the picnic table where he sat down and gazed out into the forest, not saying another word. After being able to really look at the creature, I could see that he was actually a, a, a fox. He was an old, worn-out, fox with gray scraggly fur all napped up around his head and shoulders. I wasn't too sure what to make of him, but then again, I was in this land of the turtle and many things here were not as they seemed. I went back to helping prepare the campsite for our night in the chilly woods, and soon we ate a simple meal of beans and corn, and I finally stretched myself out in a large sleeping bag the turtle had kindly supplied. A cool breeze that night flowed as I slept quietly and soundly under the sky that rumbled with thunder and threatened with rain. The rain never came, however, and before long a beautiful dawn with scattered low clouds broke before me. The turtle was already up and had prepared a great breakfast of bacon and eggs. The fox joined us late and sat at the end of the table, smoking another cigarette and gazing out into the trees, silent like he was the night before, letting out an occasional muffled groan in his struggle to exhale. The turtle gestured, and it wasn't long after that that we were off on the path towards the University of Life he spoke so highly of. We will have a few stops along the way, Turtle said as we started out. These are all important stops, so let's proceed without delay. The gray fox silently slipped away in another direction, disappearing into the woods as quickly as he had appeared the day before. What's up with the fox, I asked. 
Bill is a great friend of mine, said the turtle. He's my best friend, and he walks on his own path. This is the nature of all of us, and we all walk on and engage in our own intentions. Bill has lived here for a long time. He has learned how to exist among the monsters, the same monsters that were chasing you yesterday. We all find our own ways to move through the forest, and the fox has found his. We walked on. The sun attempted to rise in the morning sky that was full of wispy, low, dark clouds. These were puffy, billowing clouds that hung down below the mountain peaks that loomed all around us. It was cool and breezy, and a, the, ch the chill from the day before still hung on to me tight. Be before long, though, it started to change, and the sun did finally break through those low clouds. And birds of all shapes and sizes started to fly in and out of the trees, and hundreds of colorful butterflies eventually filled the air. Alfred prodded me along as we walked in and out of the hidden canyons and rolling hills, until there, far in the distance, I saw it.